Not that I find that there are any problems with a new house, except for one, and that is everything is brand new. What I'd like to talk about today is how to create an heirloom that you can put into your new house and pass down from generation to generation. It can be as simple as a recipe box, and it uses a method of wood carving called chip carving that's really simple to do. In fact, I'm gonna learn how to do it today and I'll show you the process as well. It's an easy, inexpensive, interesting hobby that allows you to create an heirloom at your new house. Chip carving is an ancient form of wood carving, documented to be over a thousand years old. And until recently, you can only see it practiced at theme parks like Silver Dollar City. But it's a kind of wood carving that appeals to me for several reasons. One, I need one wood carving tool. Not very expensive, not a whole set of tools. The other is that I can do interesting work with it. Now, I'm pretty good with a pocket knife. The hard part for me is coming up with an intricate design like this on which to base my carving. But recent developments, modern technology have combined with this ancient art form to give us stick-on wood carving patterns. Now they've got a line drawn vertically through them and horizontally, and I've drawn a line on here to center my pattern. What I'm going to do next is peel off this stick-on pattern and very carefully center it over those lines. Having done that, I'll be ready to start carving with a very nice, intricate looking pattern, and you can do this at home too. Works just like that. Now, before we carve, we need to practice a little bit. Before you begin your chip carving project, there's a couple of things you've got to do first. One is make sure you've got the right kind of wood. You'll need basswood. You can get this from a hobby shop. You'll also need the right kind of knife. This one is designed for chip carving, but any short bladed sharp knife will work. The blade should be no longer than your thumb from the tip of the thumb to the joint, from there to there. Next, you want to hold it correctly with your thumb in front of the blade. Now, when I was a kid, my dad said, Joe, when you're carving, never cut toward yourself. But in chip carving, you do car carve directly toward yourself. And you lay the knife in there almost vertically, and as you pull it to yourself, you slide the knife sideways so it goes to the bottom of what becomes your chip, like this. In, lay the knife over, a nice even curve, and back out again. Another handy item is a Lazy Susan so that you can rotate your work as you're working on it. Again, almost vertically, carve all the way to the bottom of that chip, and if you've done it right, it'll flick out of there neatly. The right tool, the right wood, a Lazy Susan, and a little bit of practice, and we're ready to start on our personal heirloom. Here's another little tip, especially for your first chip carving project. Get a felt tip marker or a dry erase marker and mark the areas that you're going to carve out first and then begin carving. Again, the vertical stroke, laying the knife over as you draw it toward you. Slice right through the pattern. Get your knife down to the bottom of what's going to be the chip. Rotate the piece and do it again on the other side. Obviously, this is going to take some time to complete, but once you've got the carving done, the next step is to remove that plastic self-sticking pattern. The easy way to do that is to use a hair dryer and a wire brush. Once you've got that taken off, you sand lightly to remove the pencil marks that you put on there, and then we'll be ready to stain it. You can stain it to a dark color or a light color, whatever is your preference. But when you get a project like this done, you've got a family heirloom that your family will cherish for years to come. And it's a great way to take a little bit of old world tradition and put it into your new house.